Hello, I am Symphogail. Alright, we got the Psychic and Flying Egg event. The Psychic Eggmons are reruns, but the Flying Eggmons have a couple new Eggmon families, which are the Farfetch'd and Firo families. So, uh, before we begin, I want to remind you about something. Whenever I discuss Eggmons, I always hold them to lower standards. Like, I always compare them to low tier units because Eggmons are horrifically outclassed by gachas, and you have to squint really hard to justify their use. But I am pleased to say that this batch of Eggmons actually has a couple that can be very useful. And uh, the whole point of Eggmons is that you slot them for the lack of a better replacement. Or you use them in Champion Stadium to fulfill a specific function that your current units cannot achieve. Just uh, keep that in mind. As usual, this video is an unrated format for my Eggmon Compendium linked in the description. And uh, with all that said, we can begin here. I covered the, the Psychic Eggmons in this batch before, but I am going to give you a very brief uh, summary. Uh, Striker Alakazam is Bad Giovanni, and uh, I normally don't bright off Eggmons uh, this badly, but uh, when Giovanni is rerunning, there is no point in looking at this. <laughs> uh, support Alakazam has offensive omnibuffing, but uh, more importantly, it has a light screen. This is the only free-to-play source of light screen, and it can be a very valuable asset in Champion Stadium, especially on their permanent field effects, so you can really enhance the defensive potency of a proper special defense tank like Misty or Viola. And uh, this guy also has a same headbutt for some flinch utility, which uh, came in it. Uh, Lyra is a direct upgrade to this Egmon, but it is worth considering use for light screen alone. And then we have uh, Tech Alakazam. This guy is uh, Will and Satu, but Will Recovery. Because uh, you have a Zen Headbot and a Side Beam enhanced by Aggravation too. So you have a 60% chance of flinching and a 30% chance of confusing a target, respectively. But more importantly, you have X Regen. So with this, you can provide regeneration to a partner of your choosing, which essentially behaves as a potion. So this is a flinch bot with recovery support, which can be very good depending on the circumstances. But the problem here is that BP Morty makes life very difficult for Tekka like a Sam, because he's a direct upgrade. BP Morty has Astonish with Aggravation 1 and Confuse Ray, so he's more accurate and more reliable. And he also has a Potion to restore health on a party member. But uh, Tekka like a Sam has some modicum of offensive potential with the same headbutt because it has some actual base power unlike Astonish. <laughs> so that is the only way I can see that you can salvage this Eggmon. Then there is uh, the Executor family. A striker Executor is a bizarre mixed striker because you have a special Psychic Sync with a Seed Bomb. So this is, in actuality, a physical grass type striker. And uh, you can find strikers for both typings that perform better than a striker Executor. Gardenia is a better grass type striker, while Giovanni is a better Psychic type striker, so I don't really see the point in this uh, guy. Support Executor is a competent tank, because it has a Giga Drain, so it can sustain itself indefinitely, and that is something that you cannot say for a vast majority of Eggmons. To separate itself from Rosa, it has uh, the potential to maximize a defensive stat, as well as immunity to status and interferences at least once. So that is very handy because uh, Trap, Poison and Burn can horribly cripple a vampire kit. Uh, but the problem here is that Rosa exists and Sycamore is a far more competent uh, draining tank. So you can humor Rosa until Sycamore reruns instead of having to invest in this Eggmon. Though it's decent when properly invested and when given full offensive support. And uh, lastly, we have a Tech Executor, who qualifies as a useful Eggmon because uh, you have a Hypnosis enhanced by Troublemaker 1. So this means that uh, if the target has neutral elevation buffs, uh, 
you have a hundred percent accurate hypnosis. So this is an excellent means of preventing damage, uh, staggering the enemy. It is very useful in legendary arena as well as uh, 1500 points uh, master mode if uh, you lack uh, proper offensive or defensive resources. So uh, if you don't have an accurate sleeper yet, you should do your best to get a tech executor because uh, this guy also happens to be the most accessible accurate sleeper in the game. You only need a two passive tech executor to unlock access to Troublemaker 1. You don't even need a three passive tech executor to have uh, its uh, full potential. Accurate Sleep is used gigabuster, and it's uh, one of the recommended ways of handling content if you are just starting out. Okay, uh, first off, uh, we have uh, Striker Farfetched. And they have some good news and some bad news. The good news is that we finally have a Brave Bird user, but uh, the bad news is that it's stuck on an Eggmon with a Stanfast 3. <laughs> so, recoil moves automatically kill the viability of Eggmons because DNA is just incapable of giving them the tools they needed to sustain recoil damage. So Brave Bird is a very strong attack at 5-5, but it has this side effect where you take a percentage of the damage you deal back as recoil damage, and in this game we are dealing with very large numbers. So this unfortunately means that if you use Brave Bird a couple times, you are probably destroying yourself. <laughs> so you do have a Stanfast 3 and Regeneration to mitigate recoil damage, but... Uh, uh, this side effect is just not worth dealing with. Support Farfetch'd is the shiny for this family, and it has an okay buffing kit. It's a plus 4 attack, plus 2 defense, and plus 2 speed for the entire party. Now, the problem is that there is a ton of competition on the attack buffing department. You have Torchic, uh, Meilin and Medicham, Lisa and Lunatone, and there is the new free-to-play ones that are far more competent, like BP Surge and Raichu, and Boxy and Cider. Support of Farfetch is distinguishing niches is that it has a one bar spam and endurance. But this is just not enough to let it compete with other attack buffers. And uh, there is other Eggmons uh, who also have this buffing kit. Uh, specifically, there is uh, support uh, Tangela, who has the exact same buffs. It has one bar spam and reflect, plus healing zone 2 and endurance. So it has a much stronger utility. And uh, there is also a support uh, Licky Tongue. Yeah. Also, the exact same buffing kit, but it can wrap enemies for trap recoil, and it can also chunk them with mega kick. And it also has endurance, so... Support Farfetch just doesn't have a strong enough niche to let it compete with other attack buffers. And lastly, we have Tech Farfetch. So, uh, let's get straight to the point. Uh, my guy has Leer, <laughs> and uh, boy howdy do I have things to say about this move. Uh, so, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you will know that defense reduction is a staple in my strategy. Enemies in this game rarely have any mitigation to defense drops, and it's a great way to enhance your strikers if they already capped out all their multipliers. And Leer is one of the most effective debuffing moves, because it's a one bar spam that spreads AoE debuffs on the entire enemy team. This move alone makes Tech Farfetch'd a viable Eggmon, but then what do you do once you're done debuffing? Then you have Air Slash enhanced by Aggravation 1, so you have a 60% chance of flinching the enemy and be a disruptive nuisance. So this is an amazing utility kit, and reliable defense reduction is very hard to come by.
So Tech Farfetch is a primary competition is Kukui and Lycan Rock because at his most basic self he's also a Leerbot with a flinch utility and he's perhaps better at executing this role but Tech Farfetch has a couple advantages. First off, it has regeneration to restore health so it can sustain itself and it has air slash. And this is a big difference because Kukui is flinching is tied to Acceler Rock, which he has to recharge every three uses. But Air Slash consumes gauges, so you can constantly spam it. And this is an important distinction in contexts like Legendary Arena. Tech Farfetch is biggest issue is that it's a carbon copy of Tech Kangaskhan. And Tech Kangaskhan is strictly better here. Because instead of having X speed, it has a body slam for added paralysis utility, and a stomp is a physical move that's 100% accurate, while air slash is a special move that's 95% accurate. So tech farfetch can miss, and it also doesn't take advantage of defense debuffs, while tech kangaskhan can maybe deal a little bit of chip damage after fully debuffing the enemy team. So if you tell me to choose between one or the other, I would definitely go to Tech Kangaskhan. But Tech Farfetch does have its distinguishing niche, which is proking flying type skills. And this is very helpful for strikers like Blue and Pijod or Nade and Braviary. Blue and Pijod is a special striker, so they don't benefit from Lear, but he has a Harry 5 on his 3 fight grid, which Tech Farfetch can enable with Air Slash Aggravation 1. And Nade and Braviary is a lot more capable as a sync nuker when you can debuff the enemy team's defense. But do keep in mind that in Champion Stadium, Flying Weak, Bruno, and Marshall have impervious, so they cannot be directly affected by defense reduction. But uh, Tech Farfetch is a solid Egmon. You can be certain that I will be investing in one and showcasing it. Up next, uh, we have uh, the Firo family, and uh, Striker Firo is uh, the shiny here. So this guy is a decent striker, it's self-sufficient and it has a good 3-bar move. And what else do you need out of a striker, you know? <laughs> so you have plus 4 attack, plus 4 speed and plus 2 crit buffs with a drill pick, which is a 120 BP move with no side effects, but also no drawbacks, which I prefer. It's 100% accurate, so yeah, it's pretty good. And you also have innate critical strike one to help your offense. So I would say this is a more capable striker than Kahili and Tukanon. While she has a much higher attack stat and a better nuking efficiency, her DPS is terrible to work with because your options are Peck and Big Blast. And Big Blast is a two bar move, so that inherently it's a way of your sync countdown, but uh, Unlike Kahili, Striker Firo can spam a drill pack, so it has a better DPS by default. If I were using this in Champion Stadium, I would use it alongside Skyla and some attack buffer like a BP Surge, because 3-5 Skyla is a very capable striker, and I unironically think that she's a better striker than Striker Firo, <laughs> but um, she does need the offensive support. But with this dual striking core, Skyla can sync nuke with her innate inertia, and Striker Firo can chip in with extra DPS, which is normally how you play Skyla plus Kahili when using them as a dual striking core. So. I like this Sekmon, it's uh, perhaps uh, the best uh, free-to-play flying type striker, and uh, I have no complaints about it. Up next, uh, we have a uh, support Firo, and uh, for all intents and purposes, uh, this is a bad Skyla. <laughs> and uh, I really have uh, no justifiable reason to tell you to use this Sekmon. So it has a one bar spam plus four speed buffs for a party. It can raise a speed for itself and regenerate health, which is handy. And a drill pack for some mild offense, just a little bit of chip damage. 
Then there is um, Shifty Striker 2, which is handy because uh, Support Hero can raise its evasion, but this is random and a slow ramping, so I don't think it's making a difference uh, ultimately. The problem with this guy is that there is nothing it cannot do that Skyla doesn't do better, because uh, she has a better bulk, she is also a flying type support, she has uh, the one bar spam, she has uh, plus 4 defense and uh, plus 4 uh, speed buffs, and a potion for recovery. And she can also meme strike uh, with uh, her 3 fight grid. What's funny is that uh, speed buffing Egmonts are viable, because uh, they can help inertia strikers. Specifically, we have a uh, support uh, Scyther, who buffs uh, plus 6 speed and um, plus 2 attack for a party. So this is the perfect way of complementing uh, strikers like uh, Cygnus with Grimsley and Lesa as a striker, but uh, support hero doesn't have this niche because it cannot buff attack and it cannot maximize speed, which is the only advantage you would have over Skyla otherwise, because she needs a trainer move NPR in order to maximize the stat. So, Support Firo is just uh, a straight out class, uh, sadly enough. Last but not least, uh, we have uh, Tech Firo, and uh, guess what? This is another Lear Eggmon. <laughs> Man, DNA is really catering to my tastes here. So, I don't think I need to explain why Lear is a really good utility move. Like, this move alone makes uh, Tech Firo viable. But I think it's worth uh, talking about how it distinguishes itself from uh, Tech Farfetch and the Tech Kangaskhan. So, uh, Tech Firo is a Leerbot with offensive presence because uh, you have a Drill Pick. It's a decent trivial move enhanced by Innate Critical Strike 2. And despite the fact that uh, Tech Egmonts have uh, below average offensive stats, it's uh, still uh, very viable considering that you are already debuffing the enemy team to enhance your offense. So, this guy can contribute with some cheap damage here and there. But what baffles me about the Tech Firo is that it is all over the place. <laughs> so, besides Leer and Drill Peck, you have X Defense and the trainer move that buffs Defense, Special Defense and Crit. It's like, do you want me to tank with this? Uh, five star tech Egmonts are perfectly capable of tanking, and the stats are there. But uh, the problem is that uh, this is a Leer bot, and if you buff your defense, then you are not reducing the enemy team's defense, which is a far more important function. So I don't think it's proper to utilize this as a tank when it doesn't even have any recovery to begin with. And uh, you also have a flying uh, special sync, so DNA really didn't want you to use this as a primary striker, but <laughs> the potential is there. Uh, Tech Firo ultimately has better DPS than Striker Firo because of the defense reduction. That's just how potent the debuffs are. So Tech Firo would make an even better partner in the free-to-play flying type striking core I mentioned earlier, composed of BP Surge plus 3.5 Skyla. And uh, that's gonna be it for this video. Uh, lots of useful placements in this batch, uh, and this is not a theory I give lightly. I genuinely think that you can get a lot of value out of uh, Tech Executor, Tech Farfetch and Tech Firo, though I am not totally sold on Tech Firo because the offensive presence is not that amazing, but Leer is such a good move that I think it pushes it <laughs> to viability anyway. But yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something from this video, and um, I hope you stay healthy and take care of yourself. See you next time.